some factors associated with punish. When you punish, you better reinforce appropriate behavior. The problem with punishment is that it does not teach a new response. It only suppresses one. So it's not going to teach the kid or the person or the adult or whatever what to do in, an, in that situation. It's just saying this is not going to cut it. It's not telling you what does cut it. Right? Um, so the response will come back once you remove that punishment. Um, we often, the, you know, the colloquial term for this is uh, thinking, that, you know, when we say that a kid uh, is testing me or testing you, right? So they're finding out what's, you know, if that punisher is still in effect. Oh, keep testing me. Go right ahead. You know, that type of thing. Gotcha. And uh, that you're still going to punish the inappropriate behavior. But once that punisher is removed, the behavior just zips right back in place. The inappropriate behavior, um, unlike extinction, where it, it's pretty much gone. It does you to get the spontaneous recovery, of course, but generally speaking, it's gone. All right. Um, so, because we know about punishment, and we know that you know, behavior, we need to reinforce appropriate behavior, uh, and we know that punishment is uh, uh, context specific. Right? Um, we have to we have to address that issue, and we want to make sure that if we're going to use punishment, we're going to be consistent and quick with it. Right? And we'll talk about that here in a minute. Um, so we're going to maximize the likelihood that the contingency will be implemented. Um, in other words, we're saying build an appropriate response. Um, so when we punish a particular response, we want to set up a scenario that allows the appropriate response to be selected for. So oftentimes when you are doing behavioral stuff and you're trying to correct a behavior, you may punish one and then you say, here's what I want you to do in this scenario in the future so you don't get punished. In other words, you're giving them an SD. Develop a strong discriminative stimulus for appropriate responding. You're telling them what you want. And then you can reinforce for appropriate and you replace that inappropriate behavior with an appropriate one. You guys should all be going, ah, I get that right now. That's DRA. Exactly. In other words, when you're using punishment, you want to try to set up a DRA situation as well. Minimize the discriminative stimuli for the unwanted behavior. So if you're in an environment and inappropriate behavior is happening, um, figure out what is selecting that inappropriate behavior. If you've got two kids that are sitting next to each other, they're always fighting, one of them's always getting in trouble, separate them, right? Minimize that discriminative stimulus so you don't have to get the kid in trouble anymore. Basically, all you're doing then is setting up an appropriate response. You're setting up a different discriminative stimulus to select for the behavior you do want. Right? So you punish the inappropriate, and then you modify the environment to select for that desired behavior. Um, we, and we also, at the same time, minimized the SD for the, the um, for the um, uh, we minimized the SD uh, for that unwanted behavior by moving the child away from their problem friend or whatever it is. Right? Also, we have to think about the reinforcers. Uh, you, you know, the inappropriate behavior is being reinforced somehow. So you better identify how, so that otherwise the inappropriate behavior wouldn't be there. So maybe it's a you know another student in the class is reinforcing the inappropriate behavior when kid X engages in that behavior. Um, so you want to uh, try to minimize that reinforcers as well. Um, again, when when we talk about punishment when reinforcement together, um, what you see is that reinforcers win. Right? So you may be punishing a particular behavior. But if you don't address the reinforcers for that same behavior, then that behavior, the problem one, is going to continue. Right? The reinforcement will win. It's more powerful than punishment. That's just the nature of it. Right? So again, as with the slide shows, decrease one, increase another. So in other words, use your DRA stuff here. Feel free to punish, punish but also use your DRA. Other factors. Right? The intensity of a particular stimulus okay, is important. This is kind of weird to talk about. It's hard to describe. So you know, read through it and see if you can see if I can make any sense here, right? because I get a little confused when I even talk about this. The idea is you need to use an intense punisher, but not so intense that it's abuse. But if you use a punisher that's rather weak, right, then it's like a mild, a very mild spanking, mild slap on the hand then that is like you're likely to habituate to that very quickly. So then in order for you to try to reduce the behavior the next time it happens, you're going to try something a little more intense and a little more intense, a little more intense. Ultimately, if you choose a very mild punisher at the, at the onset, 
then the behavior will likely continue because it's not a very powerful punisher, right? And you'll end up using a more powerful punisher than what you would have needed to if you started out from the beginning with an intense one. So the intensity, it's kind of, a, it's kind of counterintuitive. Uh, but because you habituate to those mild punishers, you end up having to ramp it up and you get more and more and more and more and more intense. But you could have started off with something rather intense uh, from the beginning and been more effective. This is especially the case where the descriptive stimuli and the reinforcers are strong for inappropriate responding. Again, I told you reinforcement is going to win. This is exactly what's happening here. Right? You need to overcome that reinforcer. Uh, and in order to do that, you need to have a rather intense punisher. Uh, so again, if the, to continue on with my point, if you do that previous, then a very weak stimulus um, will likely be effective. And what I mean by that is saying that if you do the stuff on the previous page, if you reduce those discriminative stimuli for inappropriate, if you, dis if you decrease the reinforcers for appropriate, then a weak stimulus is going to be effective because there's no competing contingency there. You're not, it's not competing with itself or the behavior isn't competing itself. Right? One of the last things you should never do right, is pair a punisher with a reinforcer, ever. Right? Because at that point, the reinforcers are dramatically going to win. Right? Um, attention is a classic example of this. Right? Um, so a lot of times we try to punish uh, an inappropriate behavior, but in, a, in the same sense, that's attention. So they're combined, and guess which one's going to win? The attention is going to be a reinforcer and not a punisher. Right? As a result, what we need to do is make sure that attention is provided for appropriate behavior um, and not for inappropriate, and unless for inappropriate behavior, and then when inappropriate behavior does happen, you can punish it. So it's that bad attention, right? If you will, or negative attention. And I hate using the term negative here because negative usually means in our field positive, you know, added or removed. But in this case, we're talking about the moral stuff. So the getting in trouble type attention. Uh, for kids that don't get any attention, getting in trouble is reinforcing, right? Because they're getting some attention uh, in, uh, overall. Right. So again, never pair those things. It'll backfire on you, guaranteed.